In this module, we're gonna look at working with the property pane of a web part in a SharePoint framework client side web part. This first section is just gonna introduce you to the property pane. We're gonna start with an overview of the web part property pane and then how we can go about implementing custom properties for the property pane. The property pane has three key elements. We have pages, headers, and groups. A page is a whole panel that you can see there on the task pane on the right. A header is the section at the top where in this screen that you see on the far right hand side of the slide, it's where it says description up at the top. And then there's groups. We can have different groups that contain different fields and that allows us to group things within a specific page. Property panes must contain a page and at least one group uh, that we can have additional things that are optional, like additional groups and as many things as we want inside of those groups. The property pane supports the following field controls or field types. We can have labels, text boxes, multi-line text boxes, check boxes, drop downs, links, sliders, toggles, and we can even build custom ones as well. Now to implement the header group in the fields, the way you're gonna do this is inside of a web part, there is a method called get property pane configuration. And that's gonna return back a single object, or it's a single property actually, but you use the get keyword in JavaScript to return the value of it. And that's gonna return back an object of type I property pane configuration. This is gonna have a, a array, a single property of, a, of pages that has an array of multiple pages. And then each page can have a header and groups section. And you can see there within the header, we can have a description property. We can also inside the groups, each group can have a name and can also have fields that have been assigned to it as well. Now to define what you're gonna do, the way you're gonna implement your public properties on your web part, and these aren't directly related to the property pane, but they're the custom properties on your property pane. You're gonna import a, uh, the corresponding field types on your web part class when you wanna have different field controls that are gonna be showing up inside of the property pane to expose data from the property pane uh, or from the public properties on your web part. Field types are available as modules in the at Microsoft slash SP web part base uh, NPM package. You're gonna modify the default get property pane configuration method and add in properties to the group fields array. Now, how do you handle property pane field changes? The property pane has two different modes that it runs in. By default, the first mode is reactive. And it's reactive in the sense that as I make changes uh, inside of the different fields, those changes are gonna be applied live to the corresponding properties that they're attached to. The other option is non-reactive. So in reactive mode, again, every change is gonna trigger a change event that's gonna write that value back to the property. But in a non-reactive mode, it does not update the web part user interface automatically unless the user confirms the changes. And so the way that this works is that this is a little bit more like the traditional web part editing experience that we had um, prior to the SharePoint framework where we had a button at the bottom of the property pane where we had to click apply to actually apply our changes and write them to the properties. So the way that you change the mode is by overriding the disable reactive property changes property. By default, this is gonna return back false, but you can switch this around to return true instead. And when you return true, that's gonna make the property pane non-reactive. So how do we add configuration properties to web parts? What you're gonna do is you're gonna modify the property pane settings method, and you're gonna add the property to the group fields array. So here you can see where I have a group fields array, and I have a single property called the property pane text field that's mapped to the description public property. And then the label is just gonna be a descriptive label uh, that's gonna show in the UI. I then can add configuration properties as well to these guys. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pass the property into the React component when the React component has been created. So here you can see where I'm creating a reference to my React component, or I'm creating an instance of it by saying react.createElement. And then I'm attaching the, to the description property on my web part to the public description property on the React web part itself. And so when these changes happen, 
this is what's going to cause the re-rendering of my react based web part then i can also handle property handle the values in a react component when the component starts and whenever the property uh, value has been updated so here i can check to see on the component did mount i can actually call this do something method what that's going to do is that's going to pass in the description property that when that's been set um, on the component itself. Then when the component has been updated, I can check to see did the description property change. And if it did, then I can call my do something method again to do whatever I want with it. And this is useful, like say if I have a weather web part or a stock ticker web part, if the stock symbol that was changed that was passed in, then I could trigger uh, and my do something method, maybe I'm going to go out fetch a new stock quote for this new stock symbol and re-render uh, the rendering that I want to show. So in this first demo, let's take a look at just work with some simple stuff of working with the property pane and custom properties and adding some elements uh, to our property pane, our, our property pane uh, uh, instance. Okay, so in this demo, we're gonna take a look at with the property pane and how we can do some simple configurations with the property pane and custom web parts. Now I've already got a web part that's created here and I've already gone ahead and extended the property pane as well. So this is currently running in my local environment. And so I'm gonna switch this over into edit mode. And what we'll see here are a couple new things. We see the description here. This is what we get out of the box in a SharePoint framework client-side web part. And as you'll see here, um, we can see the changes happen live uh, as I make my changes. So you can see as I add spaces to this, you can see those changes happen right away. But one of the things I've done here is I've added in a text box control and a slider control, two out of the box controls. Let's look at the slider first. So you can see here that it's got a number here that's showing here on the side, both on the web part and the slider. Now, if I slide it back and forth, up and down, you can see the values are changing on the fly. Um, so we'll take a look at the code and see how that's being done in just a moment. The other thing I want to show you here is how we can change um, the value of our text box. And while this doesn't look all that interesting, I can go ahead and plug in south. And you can see it was showing north beforehand. What you might have noticed is that I have a little bit of data validation. So we know that one of the continents in the world is not um, just, is, is just known as uh, uh, south. Um, so if I just have south here, you'll see I'm getting this uh, valid uh, data validation, little error message is showing up and saying that only one of these five options is available. Um, and so it's checking to see the value that's being put in in the text box is being checked against some other values. And when it's not a valid thing, you notice the data wasn't being changed in the web part. But if I change in, uh, when I put the real value here, like North America, you can see the value did change, the error, the error message went away. So everything is, is added there. Uh, only on, on valid data. Well, let's look at the code and let's see how this is being done. So if I jump over here to my uh, standard web part project and I open up my web part, what we'll see is I've added in two new properties to my public properties on my web parts uh, public interface. So I have my continent and I have num continents visited uh, numbers that, that are available here in this. Uh, switch over to full screen and you'll see down here in the web part, I'm just rendering both those values out into the body of the web part here. So a continent where I reside and number of continents where I visited. Now the code for this is going to be inside of the get property pane configuration. So what I've done first is I've added in my text field, my property pane text field. And what I've done, I've added in the text field control for the continent, for my continent. I gave it a label to show where it's showing up. And it's mapped here to the my continent um, custom property that I created uh, for my web part in the interface. So you can see up here, that's the one that's, we just saw a second ago, it's in my interface. As that value changes, uh, in the property pane, that's how the property is getting changed. And then the render method is being recalled, is called again to re-render the content out uh, on the page. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this is we're doing beta validation. And the way we do this is by implementing a function for the on get error message uh, event. And the way that I'm doing this is that if you have a function that you bind to the on get error message function, um, so you see how I build this function here called validate continents, which we'll look at, and I'm binding it to the on get error message function. And what that's going to do is it's going to pass in a string, uh, the current value of the, of the control. Uh, so it's going to pass in the string of my continent into the valid continents function. 
And if that function returns back an empty string, then I know the valid is valid. It's good, so it'll see, it won't see that as a problem. But if it returns back um, something other than an empty string, so it has a string in it, then it's gonna treat that as the error message and it will say that this value is invalid and display that, that, that error message. Um, when it's invalid, it won't update the actual property on the public part of the WebPy um, either. It'll just uh, leave it blank. So if you take a look at the, what the function does here, you see the validate continents is have a text uh, box value being passed in or a string value is being passed in and it's returning back a string. So all I'm doing is I've got a uh, constant of just a bunch, an array of strings, which are just continents. And then I'm converting the one that was passed in to validate against, convert it to lowercase. So we're doing an exact match or exact comparison. And then I check to see uh, the index of it in the array. So if it comes back as negative one, then it knows that it didn't find a value in there. So uh, I know it's not a valid value because it's not one of the ones I'm expecting. So I'm going to write back an error message. Otherwise, if it comes back with something other than negative one, that's the index of where it is in the array, which means that it found it. Uh, so it's a valid value. So I'll return back the empty string. Now, the other uh, control we have was the slider. And so with the slider, that's mapped to the num contents uh, visited, how many places I visited. Um, I've got the label set and you see additional property values that I've set between the min value and the max value and the show value. Um, so some of these are required and some of these are not required. Some of them are default. Um, the show value is how you're seeing that number five showing up to the right of the slider. So how did I get that property pane slider um, into, my, into my project? Well, if I scroll back up to the top here and I look at where the SP web part base that's being imported, um, by default, I get the, the text field and the, config, the property pane configuration interface and the base web part. Um, what I did is I said, well, I wonder what other controls are available to me. So the way I did this is I just put a comma on the end of it and I started typing in property pane and you can see here, I got this big list and this is being populated because I've installed or downloaded all the dependent projects. And so it's um, VS code has uh, looked inside those projects and found the different values. So in this case here, like I found, take the drop down, you may have um, additional properties for each one of these different uh, controls. And so that's what the second value is that's being passed in to these different controls here. So the first one is for the property that you're going to bind to. And the second one is the actual object or the properties that you can pass in and see the properties for this one. If I just hover over it, you can see the property type is a I property pane slider props. So if I want to see what's available there, if I right click on the actual control and go to the definition, that's going to take me to the, the type declaration for this thing. You can find the properties, do that same thing with the property pane definition. And you can see here that I can look at all the same properties or all the properties that are available to me on the property pane slider. The ones that have a question mark on them, that's the TypeScript notation as being um, optional. Um, but other ones like min and max, those are required. So that's why I had to put those in. But show value was not required. I just added in uh, uh, just for the heck of it. But it just wanted to show you how we could do both of those. So this is how we could do very simple configurations and customizations using the out of the box uh, controls that we get in the SharePoint framework for our property. Specifically, we're going to look at adding a custom property pane field and then also creating custom property pane controls inside of this uh, section. The property pane supports the following types of field types out of the box, all the ones that you can see here. But it's always possible to create your own custom field types as well for your own projects. Now to implement a custom property pane field, it's going to require you to define an interface within your web part that includes one or more target properties. You're then going to import the property pane custom field field type into your web part class. And then that field type is also going to be available to you as a module within the at Microsoft slash SP web part base NPM package. The way you're going to implement this is you're inside the web part. You're going to create a render method for the custom field. So here I've got a uh, custom field renderer that's going to have an HTML element passed in. And you can see here where I'm rendering it out as just a standard div. And then I'm also going to have a custom field definition that I'm going to define then in the group fields array. So here I've got my custom pane, uh, custom or my property pane custom field, and then I'm mapping his on render method to the custom render custom field renderer method that I defined inside of my web part. Now creating custom property pane controls. Let's talk a little bit about this. 
When the out of the box property pane controls don't meet the needs, then I can always create my own custom controls. And creating custom controls is gonna promote code reusability uh, inside of my projects here. So for example, you can see that I have like my nested uh, list dropdown where I can select a list and then it's gonna show me a list of all the available options um, inside of it. So it's a very short little section to talk about because the code for this is quite significant. So let's take a look at the demo and let's see this in action. It's a little bit easier to understand when we can see a working example. In this demo, we're gonna see how we can create a custom property pane control and use it within an existing SharePoint framework web part. So what I have here is one that I've already created. So let's take a look at how it works and then we'll look at the code and see how it was implemented. So I've got my same web part from the previous demo, but the difference here is that I wanna be able to, instead of typing in uh, the name of the continent where I reside, I'd like to instead select it from a dropdown list. And so I'd like to create like a continent selector. So if I go over here to my edit my web part, you'll see here that I now have this dropdown to where I can choose from different options that are available to me. So again, it would be nice to be able to have a reusable component. So let's go over to our web part and let's take a look at the web part and let's see what we've actually created here. So here I've got a property pane continent selector. And what this continent selector does is I have a continent property that I've defined. So I have this string. You can see what we had before with our text field. I assign it a label, set if it's disabled or not. And then I can also set the on property change. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to handle uh, any updates to tell the web part to re-render itself if the value um, of the selected value, if that value changed from the previous value that was currently selected, all right? So you can see here I've also disabled or uh, commented out my uh, uh, my uh, error uh, code, my error checking or my validation code um, because we don't need that anymore. We're, we're having a, a selector and so we only have an exact uh, number of references or options I can choose from. So how does this work? So if I scroll up here to the top, what you'll see here is I have a new import statement. And this import statement is importing the property pane continent selector and an interface for the public properties. And you can see that's coming from this subfolder called controls. So let's take a look at that. So here inside of controls, let me give you a high level of how this thing is built. This thing is built as a React control. And so the web part is not a, a React web part, but I just built this as a React control because I can reuse the existing dropdown control from the Office UI Fabric or the Fabric React controls. And that's what I'm doing here. But I still need to go through and figure out how to build this thing as a templated kind of control and something that I can e easily use uh, inside of my web part. And so what I did, if I come back down here to my, um, my selector, so you can see here I've defined this thing called a property pane uh, continent selector, and then it implements the I property pane field. So this is my custom control. This is the root of my custom control. Now we have a bunch of references up here at the top. I'm gonna to just highlight the, the important stuff here that we need to see. Remember this continent selector, his job is really to act as the public interface or public properties uh, for my, my control. And it needs to know how to create an instance of the underlying React component and setting the properties on that React component. So if I scroll down a little bit here, right here on the on render here, what on render is doing, when my component or my control is being rendered, the on render method is gonna trigger. And so here in this case, I'm saying, um, looking at the this element, so I'm checking to see, do I have a reference to the current element uh, on the page? And this element right here, this, right, this piece of this element, this is looking for the div of where my control is gonna be rendered out. Uh, so in this case here, I'm creating a new instance of a React control. So hide the tool pane here. Um, I'm creating my content selector and it's got some public properties that are being assigned to it. And so I'm setting the, uh, the label, the on changed event, the selected key, disabled um, state, and a state key, which is a little hack. Once I've created this, uh, this element here, I'm then gonna add them to the page by just calling dom, a React DOM render and then passing in the element where it should be rendered or the element that I wanna render and where it should be rendered. 
Uh, you can see here I'm doing this on this on change event. I'm basically doing the same thing that we did earlier, which is whenever the property changes, I can need to specify what property changed. And I do that by calling the this.target property. That is what was referenced inside of my web part. If I jump back over here, my web part. That is what's referenced inside my web part right here, where I'm saying that I'm tying this to that property of my continent. Uh, now, let's talk about some, it's gonna get a little interesting here for a second. So what I've got, if we look at some of these properties, we can see that here's the element that's being passed in that I'm getting a reference to, or it's not being passed in on my, when it renders, I'm saying on the on render uh, method. So renders is checking to see, do we have a, an element we're gonna render out? And if we don't, then I just do nothing. Otherwise, down here, you see, if I don't have it, we're going to um, uh, get a reference to what's already there, what's being passed in in the on render method where this is going to be rendered out. Now, I have to specify the type of a thing that I'm rendering. So you have to I have to specify that the, the type of this, which is a public property, that this is going to be a custom field type. And I do that by using this enumeration here of the property pane field type of dot custom. Here for the properties, now what I've done here is I've got a, an interesting kind of uh, situation here. What I have is I'm gonna have public properties that I wanna be able to set on my React component. So things like maybe if I was if I let them uh, choose a default value or if I let them specify the values that we wanted to show. So if let's say if it wasn't uh, continents, instead I wanted to pass in a, a bunch of colors, then Maybe I only wanted them to choose from four colors. And so maybe I had a property, which is an array of strings of what properties we wanted to use. My React component, what I'm trying to say is that my React component, maybe it had some public properties that I wanted to be able to set. But then there are also special properties that a property, that, that a, a property pane uh, control needs to have as well. Things like a key and a label, uh, if it's disabled or not, stuff like that. So I've got two different sets of properties, the ones that are used for my React control and then the ones that are by default gonna be on every single property pane control. Now the way I'm handling this is I'm creating this property, this public property here of the selector props. So these are the properties, these are the public properties that I can set on the, on the property pane control. Then, if I come over here and I look at this other class called the internal props, which is the same name, just internal props, the only thing that you'll see that's different with this is that he's inheriting from not only the ones that I just showed you a second ago, but also the ones from my, um, I'm sorry, the, the ones I just showed you a second ago, which are these, but he's also inheriting from custom field props, the, the base stuff that we're gonna have with every custom control uh, that we're gonna create uh, using this SharePoint Framework API. So this is really a mashup of those two different sets of properties, the ones that I need for my control and the ones that my, that SharePoint is gonna have for every control. Now, the next piece here, if I come over here to the components, this is then React, the React component. And you can see here that my React component is just, it's a standard React component. There's absolutely nothing special about this. He's got a render method. He's using the dropdown control from the Office UI fabric. And then his on changed event He's just going to walk through this on changed event and, and publish uh, when a property actually changed, if it did change. He has a, a state set to him, so we have a, set, a set of options, and we also have the properties themselves of the control uh, of the, the React component itself. And a lot of these look the same as the one that we had a second ago with the selector there or the selector's properties like label and select a key and disabled because the public properties that are going to be set on my React control are also the same ones that I want the, the developer to be able to set from the property pane itself. So again, if I come over here to my selector, you can see he's using those internal props for his internal properties. And that is the mashup of, or the, 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 um, uh, the unit union of the properties that every control has custom control has and my specific control. And so once we built this whole thing out, we have our control like this, then to use it, we're simply going to, as I showed you a moment ago, we'll just reference it on the page with his public properties. And then I can just use it by creating a new instance of it just like this.
And that's how we can work with custom controls uh, for the property pane in a SharePoint framework client side web part. In the last section within this module, we're going to look at leveraging the popular uh, controls from the SharePoint Framework Patterns and Practices Reusable Property Pane Controls Library. So we're going to look at what these controls are and then how we can leverage them. So the property pane controls that we get out of the box in the SharePoint Framework API are pretty basic controls. Things like text boxes, drop downs, sliders, we've seen these but they don't contain any logic or any detail about the current SharePoint site. So simple controls that developers would wanna be able to use in their web parts, that's really how these controls kind of uh, are categorized. Um, developers can add logic to initialize them. Like for example, I could create a dropdown list or use a dropdown list, and then I could then initialize it when my web part property pane uh, opens to get a list of all the current lists from the current SharePoint site. And then a developer my, like myself can then create a custom property pane field with these controls and add additional business logic to them to create my own custom smart controls so that it would be then much more reusable to drop a uh, all SharePoint lists control into my web part instead of having to initialize that every single time. I could reuse this control over and over in, my, uh, in all my different web parts. Now, what, what some people have done, uh, specifically the Patterns and Practices group, the SharePoint Patterns and Practices group, what they have done is they've created a suite of uh, controls as an open source community library. Uh, and this is called the, the Property Pane Controls for the SharePoint Framework. The, it's a, what these are are reusable controls that have some smart logic that are tied to the existing SharePoint site. So they're gonna allow us to do things uh, like just drop a single control in that knows how to get a list of all the current lists in the current SharePoint site. Um, we've also got things like a color picker. Uh, we have a date picker. We have our, as our, our list pickers I mentioned a second ago, and we even have a people picker. This one's really neat because this one will look at all the users and, and groups um, that you have access to, and it will allow you to automatically filter those. And the neat thing about these is that you don't have to write like in the case of the people picker, you don't have to write any of the any of the code to use the REST API, uh, the Microsoft Graph REST API, to get all the different results back from this. Um, the list picker, same thing. You don't have to write the code required to call the SharePoint REST API uh, to get all of these things out. So the way you're going to add them to your project is pretty straightforward. Um, the, it's really well documented on the site uh, that I referenced earlier in the slides. The first thing you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to install the um, package in your project. You're gonna do that by running npm install and then download and install the package called at pnp slash spfx property controls. Uh, make sure you add that dash dash saves and that ensures that it gets recorded in the package.json uh, file. Then you're gonna import a reference uh, for the controls you wanna use into your web part. So in this case here, I'm adding a reference to the list picker and the list picker order by uh, controls or uh, uh, objects. And then I'm gonna add it to the property pane configuration. And so I have a property or an array called lists. Uh, it's just a string uh, of a, an array of strings. And in this case here, um, I'm giving it a label. I'm telling the selected list. So which list is uh, the one that's gonna be, uh, do I wanna have uh, show up? Should I show hidden lists inside of this dropdown list? Um, how should they be sorted? Uh, and then you can just see all the other options that I have there as well that are all referenced there. Um, I even have a, um, uh, I'm using the on property change to notify SharePoint when the proper, when this control changes uh, so that I can do some additional work with this, um, uh, with this method when things actually changed. Uh, so that I could, if I needed to had another property, another uh, drop down that contained that was going to show all the items inside that list, then I could actually refresh it so that those show up. So let's take a look at how we can add the um, uh, PMP reusable property pane controls to our project and use them in a real world uh, web part. 
In this last demo, we're gonna take a look at using the popular PMP reusable property pane controls in a SharePoint framework web part. Now, one of the challenges that we have uh, in working with some of the controls that are available to us is they're absolutely fantastic in the sense that we can do all kinds of things with them. Um, they don't have any logic based in them, but they do like with drop-down lists and all other sorts of controls that are there with, that we can use uh, for our own our own purposes. But sometimes it would be nice to have these smart controls. Uh, and when I say smart controls, I mean controls that understand how to uh, do different things with the SharePoint APIs that we don't have to worry about doing on our own um, because it's built all the logic for us and it's common things that we would need to do. So like, for example, um, in this web part, I would like to be able to uh, pick somebody. So I'd like to be able to use this as like a people picker, find someone by the name of like say Sarah. So I type in SAR. Now this is a hard, court, uh, a hard coded list that's being returned back to me. Um, but here I can just choose a user here. I pick Sarah Davis and you can see that it's got Sarah's name that shows up here. I go to a search for John Doe and pick John Doe and you can see John Doe showing up. So this is a cool little people picker option. Another one too is that what if I had like, you know, a, a complex set of data uh, that I wanted people to be able to enter in. So I can do that by clicking on this expansions thing. And this tool right here allows me to choose from different options and put a little comment in. Maybe I'll add a second one as well for like say the South region. And we'll just do another comment. And if I save these changes, you can see here that I'm now seeing this additional data showing up. So you can see different ways of how I'd use this. These are two of the, the PMP reusable property pane controls. So how did I get these into the project? Well, if I come over here to my project and I look at the package.json, um, one of the, the only thing I did was I installed this package called at PMP slash SPFX property controls. So I've added a reference to this in my project and installed it. Now, if I then come over here to my web part, and I look at the top of the web part, I'm, you can see where I'm importing these two things in. I'm importing one called the property pane uh, collection data right here and the custom collection field type, which is an object that, uh, just a, a random data type that we have. And I'm importing both of those to implement that expandable property uh, uh, interface that you saw. But for the people picker, I've added in another set of import statements to say that I want the people picker, there's his public properties on it, uh, or an interface, and then also a principal type, and I'm importing it in from right here. Usage of these is pretty straightforward. So I've got my expansion options, that's my random kind of data that's gonna get returned back to me. And my people is an array of um, uh, people or groups. So the way this is being used, if I scroll down here, in the property pane, you can see in this case where I have created an instance of my property pane, uh, my property pane control for the people picker using the PMP uh, SharePoint framework uh, property pane controls. So this is tied to the public property of people. And then I've just got a bunch of other stuff that I've got listed here. So I've got, you know, some initial data I want to display. That would be the people who are currently selected. Uh, I can say the type of people that I'm looking for. I could say what happens when a property changes. Um, passing in the SharePoint context, um, all of this sorts of stuff. And then down here for the expandable thing, here's my field collection data. I'm binding it to the expansion options. And then I'm passing in like the header for the panel, the label of the button, the value, like if I have default values that I'm gonna set. So if I go back to my web part, they're not default values here, but you see I have two values set. When I click on this, I'd like to have those values reset in the interface even if I close the property pane and I come back and look at it, I'd like to see those values still set there. So I've gone through and I've set up all the different options that they can choose from for that, that first field. And then here's the second field, which is just a string. So first, the first field here that you can choose from was the region field, had an idea title, um, had a required state that so you had to fill it in and the type of data that was gonna be used. And then here are the drop down, And then down here is where I'm just setting a comment for it um, as well. And so this is just showing you how you can use some of the uh, more popular controls. Oh, and I guess the last thing to show you here is just, here's how I was rendering those out, where I just had these two divs and I was just gonna enumerate through anything that was selected and write them all out 
and then same thing down here with those expansion options. So this is just code of, you know, how do I render that stuff out? Um, it's not as important to it. It's more to show you the controls themselves. And so this is just an example of showing you how you can use the PMP reusable controls, a really popular library uh, for um, using um, uh, custom property pane controls. In this module, this is a fairly quick module, and what we looked at here is working with the web part property pane. We saw how to uh, configure and customize the property pane uh, with the out-of-the-box controls that are included in the SharePoint framework. We saw how to create our own controls uh, when we needed to create something custom. And then we also saw how to use the reusable controls that were available to us as part of a PMP uh, open source uh, community library and how we can leverage them. Uh, I've included a couple additional links inside of this, uh, this module uh, where you can learn more about working with the property pane on uh, SharePoint framework client side web parts and how you can create reusable property panel controls as well for your SPFX solutions. I hope you got a lot out of this module and learning how to work with the property pane for uh, uh, client-side web parts in the SharePoint framework. Thank you very much.